So we're heading to the house in Fredericksburg. I'm a little nervous, obviously, coming all this way to see a house that we uh, haven't worked on before. And we're excited to go and check it out. Building a home is never easy. But what happens when you add in a global pandemic? With new obstacles and endless supply chain disruptions, can your dream home still become a reality? To prove what really is possible, we went to Fredericksburg, Texas and teamed up with Tyler O'Brien of Agave Custom Homes and built a craftsman-style farmhouse in Hill Country. Then we called on eight design teams from around the country to turn these empty rooms into a haven that's peaceful, productive, and party ready. Stay tuned to learn all their tricks of the trade, from when to splurge, to how to get creative in the face of inevitable constraints. No matter your own style, you're bound to find a new idea for every room in your house. I'm your host, Carisha Swanson with House Beautiful, and this is season one of Blank Slate. Today we're here to meet Laura Hodges, I chose her as our home office designer because her style is all about clean, modern, and tailored looks. And she has a real focus on sustainability. Let's go meet her right now. Hey, Carisha. Hey, good Laura. to see you. Welcome to Fredericksburg. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It looks amazing. I'm excited for you to be here. There is still so much more to do, but I want to get you inside to see your room. Awesome. Let's do it. And still, clearly, a construction zone. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Hi, I'm Laura Hodges. I've been assigned the home office, but I'm also making it a home gym. Okay, Laura, welcome oh, to your room. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. <laughs> I love it, I love the window. I love this expansive view that we're getting here. I mean, I have to say it is all about the view, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I have to admit that initially I wasn't entirely super excited about doing the home office, but that's just because in the, in the past, I think home offices have definitely been sort of like the back room that maybe, you know, is not quite as interesting as maybe say the living room or the kitchen or the dining room even. When you think about this room from just walking into it at the first time, are there ideas that immediately pop into your head? Well, I mean, this massive, what looks like, you know, at least eight or nine foot wide picture window is making me think that we definitely have to make this space all about this view. And we should definitely make this like a really biophilic design. Uh, I know you said that and it rolled off your tongue. <laughs> What exactly is biophilic design? So biophilia is literally the love of plants, but it's, it's our, as humans, we have a natural connection to nature and it's through natural materials, it's clean air, filtration of, of the air system, it's through um, textures and just really making sure that you have good views out the window so that it's just a natural reflection of what you're seeing outside. We're just gonna bring that inside, I think so. And oh. certainly with this being an office, you gotta think a little bit about work, right? But anything else yes, in here? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like in this day and age, no room is ever just a room anymore. We're definitely all making dual function of a lot of our rooms. And I yeah. think that this room would be perfect to dual as a home gym. A home gym, which, which Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I feel like with the gym, it's a natural extension of the home office, really, because a lot of the same equipment could be used. We can make it dual functioning. I think that that would be an interesting challenge to figure out how we can make this space, because it's so gorgeous. Yeah. Make it a biophilic home office and a biophilic gym. A biophilic gym. Yes. All right, my friend, I feel like you need to get to the drawing board and see if all these ideas <laughs> can fit into this yes. floor plan. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to give it a shot. So in this design, we're going to create a biophilic environment. We're going to incorporate lots of natural materials, and we're really going to make sure that it's multifunctional and dual purpose. We're going to flank the windows with two built-in bookcases. And I think under the window bench, it would be really awesome to have some drawers under there for additional storage. On the window bench, it would be really great to have some bench cushions, It'd create a really, really nice little reading nook. I think it's going to be important that the desk face is out into the room. First of all, that means that you're having a wonderful view out the window, and then you're also able to see people who are coming in, you can greet them, we can have some chairs sitting across from the desk. I think for additional storage and workspace, we'll put a console table behind the desk and then that way you'll have two sort of dual working functioning spaces. This has been a year <laughs> where we have all embraced our home office. That home office may not really exist. It might be a bar stool at a countertop. It might be a corner of a space. And so we wanted to make sure that this house had a true home office. 
But you know, most of us don't need a home office that operates as that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She wanted to make sure that space could do something more. Her thought process about it was spectacular. I thought, you know, she's gonna throw like another bed in there, like a sofa bed or something. Instead, she made it into a kind of home gym studio as well as an office, but one, to her point, that does not make you feel guilty. It really feels like a space you wanna work in and it has the most spectacular views out of those windows. So I'm not really sure if you're gonna work or just stare out the windows, but either way, it is a space that I would wanna be in all day. So sometimes when we're trying to come up with a design that is very specific, and in this case definitely is multifunctional, sometimes you have to splurge a little bit and just take that extra time and effort to design something. And when you design something, you can make it exactly what you want it to be, and especially if you have somebody who could make it for you, then you can collaborate with them and see the best way to move forward. And in doing so, we are actually really making sure that the aesthetics of all of the gym equipment really makes sense in an office space as well, so that when you're looking at it, you know, there's a little part of you that's like, yeah, you know, that's workout equipment. I should probably work out sometime today or tomorrow. But also that you're looking at it and you're thinking, you know what, that's actually just a lovely piece of um, well-designed furniture. Today I'm going to be talking to Paul Grothaus about the custom desk. I'm really excited to see how they're going to make this design work. It's a little challenging, but I think he's up to the task. Good morning, Laura. Happy Monday. So tell me a little bit about what you're kind of thinking for the room and what pieces you need for it. Originally, this is an office, but we really wanted to make it a multifunctional space. We wanted to make it a home office slash gym. And so what I thought was, if there was a way we could make a desk that could actually be multifunctional for both of those purposes, the desk could actually potentially come apart and be used for both working out and also for working just at an office. Is that the mood board for the room behind you there? Right behind my head, yes, it's right here. So you can see all the, actually this is the whole design back here. So um, fabrics and finishes, you can kind of see all natural materials, lots of texture. Okay, definitely got me thinking about a couple different ideas. From what I'm hearing, like with you want to talk about green, you want to talk about lighter colors. I mean, I'm definitely thinking ash is probably the right fit for it, but you know what? Um, I'll call you back in a little bit and we'll, I'll go down to the shop and I'll show you a couple of examples and maybe some bases that we've done that I think are pretty good fit. And then also um, maybe I'll show you some of the woods. Sounds good. All right, so here's ash, like what we talked about before. I think it probably is the best fit. It's really got a great grain. I could send you some samples of this to check out. Okay, that sounds great. So we had talked about options for tables. So one of the things I was thinking was like a waterfall table like this. I mean, this one's pretty cool. It's got the wrap around on the bottom. And it's got a metal accent here. I don't know if you can see this metal accent. Here's a couple other bases that we did. Um, I think they're a good example of using very linear form. Like you want that real modern look. I mean, that's gonna be super functional though. I love that. But I okay. think it's cool is if we did something like that waterfall desk as supplementary, um, you know, surface. Um, so maybe it could be like a console table or something like that in the room. I think that could be super okay. helpful to have a little bit more room. Yeah. Great. We've really got some things resolved here. I know the color that we're after. We've definitely got some engineering challenges to work through. I'm going to get some samples on the way to you. Super excited to work on this project with you and uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Laura was a great designer to work with. Her plans were very detailed. Um, she knows her style and she knows exactly what she wants in her room. There was no hesitation in her design. Um, the only real hesitation was me vaulting the ceiling, which in turn she loved. Hey Tyler, how are you? Oh, just sitting here at the house and I was walking the back rooms and I thought of maybe vaulting the ceiling in there and I wanted to see what your thoughts were. Awesome. I love the idea of a vaulted ceiling. I love the idea of having more natural light. That's always a good thing. Um, if we are going to have this vaulted ceiling, do you think we could do a like a natural wood beam running across the vault? I think that we can do that, and I think that would actually be a nice touch as you look up to that vault to have that beam. What do you think about doing a shiplap um, across the vaulted ceiling and then down the wall as well? Really give it some dimension. I agree. I think it'd look great. Thanks, Tyler. All right, take care. So when I was designing this space, I was really actually envisioning another designer. I was envisioning somebody who might be 
potentially a, an urban planning designer, somebody who would be planning out a community um, for people um, to live in. Of course, designers really always want to be able to have brainstorming sessions and come up with all sorts of inspirational ideas and just be able to see everything all at the same time, at least I do. And in a space like that, you would naturally do whiteboards, cork boards, some sort of a surface where you can see all your ideas at once. But we didn't want to cover up the whole wall with huge pieces of cork. First of all, Cork is just one solid color and it can kind of look like a mass and it also just isn't terribly interesting necessarily to have two, three big rectangles on your wall. So instead, we actually opted for this two inch wide cork strip, which just applies right to the wall with some um, double sided tape. And then we're actually running them all the way across the wall and to connect them so you don't see the seam, we made these little brass clips that are basically just brackets that are gonna cover up the connection between the two. And then we can hang things on here, we can use push pins, and then that way you're still seeing the shiplap wall, but you're also getting the functionality of the cork strip. Also natural materials and looks great in the room. When we have open bookcases, we love to take advantage of the back wall of the bookcase, whether we're painting it or doing some sort of a wall treatment. And the wall treatment, in this case, we wanted to use a Philip Jeffries wallpaper because they always have the most amazing graphic patterns. In this case, the one that we were looking at was actually too large of a scale. The pattern was kind of overscaled for the shelves. And so as much as we loved it, we thought there has to be a way for us to figure it out. The colors were perfect and the pattern was really interesting. We just thought maybe there's a way that we can rework it. So we designed these really beautiful built-in bookcases to flank the window and the view and part of what I love about these open bookcases is it gave us an opportunity to put something in the background. We could have painted it but I really felt like a wallpaper would pop out a lot and really allow us to bring in these natural materials which are really so much a part of this biophilic design. So what I loved about this wallpaper that I found was it is completely um, all natural. So it's just a grass cloth and it has this gorgeous little sort of um, metallic background so you got a little bit of a sheen. I love the pattern but it doesn't actually have to be this specific pattern. So we thought well why don't we kind of chop it up a little bit, take some creative liberty, make it almost a, like a little bit of a collage in the back. And so that's how we ended up with this pattern that we have back here now. And it really just brings in that natural feeling. It's nice and light. There's a lot of contrast between the light and the dark grass cloth. And you're still seeing the pattern. You're still getting the sort of graphic geometric feel. And honestly, it's actually quite sustainable to do it like this because you're actually using um, all of the wallpaper. There's a lot less waste. And if you have remnants, you can use lots of different patterns throughout the back. You can just use something plain, or you can chop it up. You get a really unique feeling for the space and it doesn't have to cost a lot. And that to me is the perfect hack in order to really achieve sustainability and great design. I absolutely love this room. You know, you can do design boards all day long and you actually see the place come together and it's just amazing. I love it. The light is perfect. The views are amazing. And I really feel like we accomplished everything that we set out to do. Laura's style is very organic and it's very clean. Um, and I think she killed it on the space. I love it. It's actually one of my favorite rooms. And when I've been stressed walking in this house, you go to Laura's room to have a little calming presence, which I need all the time. You ready, Croatia? I'm ready. Okay, open your eyes. Oh wait, I have to take this all in. <laughs> this is amazing. And also oh, I feel you. like I want to take all of your ideas and put them in my <laughs> own home office. <laughs> Awesome. I'm so happy that you love it. I love it. I mean, we, first we have to get into some of your goals for this space, right? Course, yeah. You wanted to create a biophilic space. Right. You had to give me the definition. <laughs> but I right. can see now how all the greenery enhances mm -hmm. the space, how the actual view comes in. You also talked about incorporating natural materials. Right. I can see that in your bookcase, yeah. but also in the treatments that you have here with this gorgeous desk. Mm -hmm. It just really feels like it comes all together. When you thought about who was gonna be working and living in this space, the person you dreamt of was who? So the person I really was inspired by was the idea of a designer who was creating a communal space 
space that could be affordable, accessible, but that is also biophilic, sustainable, and has all the things that honestly kind of tend to go to more developed areas. And so we're trying to bring in wellness and sustainability. We actually worked with a local artist. Um, we borrowed some of her pieces. She already had some amazing pieces that were kind of along the same lines. This is sort of our inspiration wall right here of all the pieces that we might be able to bring into the space. You mentioned this wall. Tell me about this, is it is this cork? Yeah, so we did all the shiplap going up on both sides yeah. because we had the lofted ceiling. We really wanted to take advantage of that, but also, you know, obviously we've got the height, the horizontal lines kind of make it feel a little bit more expansive. Mm -hmm. And so we ran the cork strips across here because we didn't want to cover up all the shiplap with, with you know, massive cork, cork wall. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. A little bit of a DIY moment, but it works really well. I mean, I think the fact that you carried over the linear lines of mm -hmm. the room really makes this so effective. Yeah. But also anybody can have access to this, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not expensive at yeah. all. <laughs> So you mentioned like this amazing view, right? Like this is yeah. kind of where it all began. Yeah, yeah. So when you thought about bringing more greenery into the space, how do you kind of play that up? How do you yeah. know how much to bring in so mm -hmm. it doesn't become the forest? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. But also to do what you needed to do, which I think for you is about cleaning the air as mm -hmm. much as like making sure that the room feels like yes. nature. So the priority here was to bring in a lot of plants, as many as we could, without yeah. overwhelming the space, which right. I think we we're successful at, you know? did, yes. Um, and they're all different, so they're all, you know, you kind of get a different view everywhere. And also they're all, for the most part, pretty easy to look after. Yeah. So we chose them for this space, of course, because they were sculptural and beautiful, but there are certain ones that are actually just much easier to look after. So in creating a space like this, of course, you want to bring in lots of plants, not only for the biophilic aspect of it, but just in general, it's lovely to be surrounded by plants and by nature. But not everybody can necessarily take care of plants, um, but there are some pretty bulletproof ones out there. And you do need to have a certain amount of plants in the room for them to really do any significant cleaning of the air. So I don't want to say that you throw one plant in there that that actually does anything. You really do need, you know, at least probably six or seven. We have way more than that. A ZZ plant is actually really easy to look after. We have a snake plant in there. We have pothos, which is pretty much bulletproof. I mean, you have to try to kill a pothos plant. And then we also have a rubber plant in there. With a little bit of care, you can actually look after plants pretty well. I feel like I need a notebook when you're talking yeah. because I kind of know like grass, tree, bush, flower, <laughs> like so all these all right. the actual. We know what's really hard to look after is cactuses, so we only put one cactus and he's just down there. And he's happy. <laughs> Tell me about some of the things in here that do more than the ICs. So almost everything does more than the ICs. <laughs> we'll be here for a while. <laughs> so um, the main function of the room is obviously a home office, so we have to have a desk. But I thought there has to be a way for us to make a desk that is literally multifunctional. So this top actually comes off. Oh, I don't wow. know if you remember 1980s step classes. Sure. There are stacks that you can take apart, yeah. step on them, so you can do your like 1980s right. aerobics. Sure. But you can also use them for more modern day working out. So you could, um, you know, you can do a plank with your feet up on one end, so you're inclined. You can do push-ups, like which is, you know, more strenuous than just putting them all on the yeah. same line. And it's really functional, and I think it's a beautiful piece. In the it is a beautiful room. piece. Exactly. So tell me a little bit more about the other multifunctional okay. pieces in here. Okay. So the window bench itself has storage underneath, which is awesome. And then we found these chairs. They actually fold. You know, there's a lot of space here. You could roll it out a yoga mat and do a little bit of workout, but you can actually also get even more room and just fold up these chairs. Mm. You can just kind of sit and have your little zen moment. Sure. On that back wall also, we have wall bars. And the wall bars are not only for, you know, resistance bands and strength training, but you can also hang <laughs> all of our little plants on the wall. <laughs> so the view in both directions is hopefully really nice. No need for a virtual background here. No, no, exactly. Exactly. That was the whole point. And this mirror, honestly, dual functioning because it is reflecting your view like sure. that's actually why we didn't really do anything else oh. in that wall is because you were literally just seeing this side of the room every yeah. time you look in here I can't figure out if in this room I want to work out <laughs> have like a meditation moment or actually get right. to work <laughs> this view could be potentially yeah. very distracting the view is, is a little distracting I think I'm gonna start with a Zen moment mm. I think you should too because yeah. this project has been a lot <laughs> But what you've created here is so beautiful and so inspiring that I think all of us want to take like a piece of this oh, to our you. own home thank offices. You. Thank you. So tell me now, working out right now, or are you going to come have a Zen moment with me? <laughs> Laura wins most Zen. She kept her cool, took her time and time and time to finish that office. Mm -hmm.